What's up, everybody? First project of my day today is going to be this closet. We had it going, but I didn't have the trim done. So I've got all the trim installed, caulked, all the holes puttied. I had to fill this little gap here because we did shiplap on the outside, which is a lot thicker than sheetrock. So I, I went and got this little board and ripped it down to fill this space. And I just gotta caulk this up and caulk a few more things. And we're gonna paint all this trim and get everything back in this closet. So that's my first project of the day. I'll try to keep you updated as we go along. So catch up with you in a little bit. All right, so we've got everything caulked up real nice in here. Um, everything out of the way we need. Um, you can look right here, got my light switches off, my light switch covers, got this bead nice and caulked in in between there. So now we just come back in and we will paint all this trim. I've already pre-painted all the trim, one coat, just had to come back in and putty my nail holes and caulk all the edges. You can see the, this is East Texas cedar on the ceiling. I got this on Facebook Marketplace. Turned out nice. We're gonna get it all painted up and move on to the next project in the house. project of the day is completed. The whole closet is painted and all the trim is done. So now it's just time to move all of our junk back in here. So my next project of the day today is command center here. If you look right here, I've got this six gang light box. But if you look closely, I didn't trim my drywall well, so I have a gap there. So I am going to fix this little gap in the drywall. It's a simple project I've been putting off, but I'm gonna to try to knock it out today also. Probably won't get it all painted waiting on mud to dry, but we'll give it a go. Take you along. <laughs> so first step in this project is going to be building me a little bridge here, because I'm gonna to have to put some 45 minute mud in here. So I'm gonna build me a little bridge to keep it off all my light switches. I'm just gonna use some green tape to do that. Just something to give me a little shape and keep it off of everything. I'm just gonna fill this little gap right here. That's all I'm trying to fill up. So it looks good with a light switch. I mixed me up a little 45 minute mud here in the cat food bowl. And I'm gonna put it in. I might've got it a little thin, we're gonna find out. This coat doesn't have to be perfect. 
It's just a filler and then we're gonna come back with some tape and mud and do it properly and have to shoot a little texture here and everything. We'll let that dry and I'll be back with you as soon as we pull the tape off. Okay, so while we're waiting on the mud to dry, I'm gonna show you the biggest project I have left inside the house and I have postponed it for too long because it's gonna be something I've never done and it's kind of a, uh, it's either gonna work or it isn't kind of thing. So I'm gonna show you my bathtub and the platform the bathtub is on. And the bathtub has no bottom in it. Um, the platform is unfinished. It's an old, old, old tub. I'm not sure when it's from. I'm told it's from Germany in the 40s, like a World War II bathtub. I'm not real sure. If anybody knows, you can leave a comment and let me know. But this is my big tub. So this tub was in our old home that burned down. It did not get damaged per se in that fire, but the people who put the tub in there initially had tried to tile the bottom of it and it leaked. So I f refused to use it because I, the old house was pier and beam and I was worried about the leaks and messing up the floor. So we never even used it. We just kind of looked at it. Um, but it's the first tub I've ever had in my life that's big enough that six foot two guy can fit in comfortably. So I gotta get this platform done that the tub is sitting on. That's my first project. I need to finish the edges on it and get it polyurethane. And then we're going to tackle building a new bottom for this bathtub. So first off, I'm just gonna get all this stuff out of the bathroom and We'll try to get the platform done this week and then hopefully in the next coming weeks we can start building the bottom for the tub. Never done it, but it should be fun, so. So one of the first things I've got to do on this platform is if you look right here, this is my drain, my cold water, my hot water. So I need to be able to get these. My drain's gonna have to go up here to the front of the tub. And then my water lines are gonna go over here because we're gonna put the filler on the side over here off this platform. So I need to cut, I've marked right here, if you can see these two marks, I'm gonna cut a valley out of the bottom of this to run all my plumbing up. So that'll be first thing first on these two boards. And then we also have to plumb in our overflow so the overflow is going to have to come down and go into the boards here and connect to the drain in that valley. But I need this to look really nice where it goes into this platform. So this is going to be some trickery along with trying to make it all look nice. You can see here I overcut when I was trimming this edge. I initially cut this with a chainsaw because I don't have a saw big enough. So I've got to bring these boards out a little bit and trim those bad cuts off. And then I'll just add a little length on the end with some of my scrap, because you're not gonna see most of that. So we're gonna start getting all this out of here now. Just got all the stuff out of the bathroom. I've got it outside, but I checked my 45 minute mud here and it is drying up very nicely. So we're gonna peel this tape together. My little tape concoction worked here. Oh yeah, very nicely. I'm gonna let that inside dry a little longer before I try to get that tape out. 
and then we'll go from there. All right, everyone. We've got the platform for the bathtub out here in the carport. I'm fitting to make some wood glitter, man glitter, whatever you want to call it. We're, we're, we're going to cover up the boat. The dust. Sawdust. Uh, oh, yeah. Sawdust. My favorite so, type of glitter. We're going to cover up the boat to keep all the dust out of there and I'm fitting to start chopping up on this a little more and trying to make it all fit together nicely and then we're going to try to poly it and make it pretty. So we'll keep on rolling and see y'all in a few. Okay. We gotta get us a couple two by fours off the wood rack back here so we can kind of jig this up so it's good and straight before we trim it. So we're gonna do that. Oh, looky here. There's my 68 Camaro. Someday that's gonna be up at the shop getting all kinds of craziness done to it. I cannot wait. I've had that car since I was 18 years old and never did anything with it. It's the only car I still have out of all the crazy cars I've had. So, here's my, my big wood rack back here on the back of my barn. All my reclaimed lumber and extra lumber. We need us a two by four. Let's see if this one's long enough. It should be. Then we need a little scrapper. I got some little scrappers right down here and there we go we are heading back to the front okay we're set up about ready to make our cut on our two boards where the drain goes um, I've got my Craig I don't know what they call this um, it's kind of like a ripping jig to make long straight cuts I bought this when I started building this house and I have used it so much i mean it it's a handy little tool if you don't have a table saw if you're trying to do something on the fly you just set this thing where you want it's got a gauge right here and this is your guide it runs along this edge and i've made lots of rip cuts with this jig right here so i'm gonna just cut this as deep as my skill saw will cut flip it up on its edge and cut that groove out. If I need more, I'll do more when it's time, but that's how I'm gonna start. So we're gonna set it up, make this cut, then we'll move on to the next part of this little ordeal project that we got going on here. Okay, we got these trimmed out with the saw. If you look down here, we got these two valleys cut in, but you can see right here, the blade wasn't quite deep enough to catch this corner. So I'm gonna try to chisel it out, see how it goes. This is pine. I wish you could smell this wood. It's old, old, old lumber and it smells, it smells good. It's, it's got the piniest smell I've ever smelled. But besides the smell, we're gonna try to get this trimmed out with the chisel. If that doesn't work, we have another tool out here that is scary, that we're gonna have to use anyway for something. So if the chisel doesn't get it, we'll break out that other tool. I'm gonna show it to you in a minute either way. So we'll be right back. So my little chisel worked pretty good. You can look down here and see it's not flawless inside there but it is trimmed out you can see the before on this other board here 
So we just gotta keep chiseling away. Look at this. Twin haircut time. Oh, you're a rebel. Without a cause. No. <laughs> okay, so after a bunch of hammering and chiseling, I got these trimmed out. Let me show them to you here. So this is the valley that's going to go underneath the tub where my drain's going to go. Um, it's not flawless yet because I may need to go a little deeper. I'm not 100% sure. So for now, it would be good enough. It's a great start. If I got to go a little deeper, I will just make it to fit at that point. So the next step is gonna be lining all these back up and securing them so that they're all even. And then I'm gonna start working on my front edge here. Remember I told you earlier that I had a few of these boards that I got a little deep in with my saw. So I've gotta make a correction on that and I'll have to add a little meat to the back to make it all line up with the rest of these boards. And I'm gonna show you a scary tool here in just a few minutes, but that's my next step. So I'm gonna clean up my mess here and we'll start on that. We've got the pedestal for the bathtub all screwed together. You can see the valley for the drain right here. Show you what I've done on the back side here. I got a two by four running across the back just to get everything as straight as I can. And then I made a little spacer with another two by four here to space these last three boards out a little further. This way I can try to deal with these bad cuts that I've made. And I'm finna use a real dangerous tool. I've got it on Amazon. You've probably seen people use it on videos online. It's a little grinder attachment with a chainsaw blade on it. I've used it once, I'm not that impressed with it. It looks a lot cooler in the videos, but it is definitely gonna help me in this situation just try to get this shaped up a little. So right now we're just roughing this in and hopefully I don't lose a finger today. So we'll see what happens. You'll get to watch if I screw up. give that little tool the benefit of the doubt. I tried it one time and wasn't impressed with it the first time I used it, but this time I'm pretty happy with how it worked. It, it definitely made things go faster, so check this out. We have got some nice shape in that now. No more of those cut marks. So I am super pleased with how that turned out. The, I'll need to make a filler here for this back side, just the width of a two by four. But I got a little bit of a scrap left of this lumber. And you may be asking yourself, you might be asking yourself, why don't you just get a new board? Well, this lumber came from a house that I tore down in downtown Palestine that burned. And it was built in the late 1800s and I got to it all that was left was the hardwood floors down. So I got the hardwood floors, the subfloors, and then 75 two by tens, real two by tens, you know, old cut lumber. And then the two by tens were sitting on top of these six by sixes. And they were 16 feet long, going around every perimeter of the piers. These bricks behind me here were the piers. That house was actually sitting on those bricks and these boards were what were sitting on top of them. So this is all I have left. So I have no choice but to make these work. There's a couple of bad spots. I'm gonna have to find something interesting to do with them, but you can't go buy this lumber. It's, it's not everywhere. You gotta find it or you pay a premium for it when you do. So that's why I'm making this work best I can with what I got. All right, guys, so here we are. I got everything flipped upside down. I'm um, sitting on some two by fours 
just to try to get it as level as I can. And what I'm trying to do is get this as flat as possible. I've got a couple of high spots in here that I need to knock down to get this sitting flat on the floor as much as I can. And then I'm just going to probably make some valleys in here to set some boards in so that it actually sets on flat boards. Um, I'm not sure how I'm going to do it yet. I'm kind of just playing this by ear. I know what I want it to look like when it's done. So I'm just trying to get there. And this is my next step in my brain. So that's what we're going to do next. So if you want to watch me make some more dust, here we go. It's getting late, but let me show you what I got going on. So I've got these pretty leveled out with the planer, the hand planer, but I've cut me some grooves right here that are the width of a two by four and I've cut some up here. But my adjuster on my saw quit working for depth, my depth adjustment. The little handle broke off of it. And I need to rip a bunch of these cuts so I can knock all that excess out and have the two by four fit down inside there. So what I did is I drilled a couple holes in my saw here so I have me a built-in depth gauge. Just screwed me a little two by four to it and I'll use that as my depth gauge so now I'm gonna get to ripping all these grooves out so my two by fours will lay down in there real nice and easy and that'll make it set real level on the floor and if I need to fine-tune a board I'll just take a little bit more out of the board that needs to go down or vice versa that was terrible my back is killing me but I got all the slices cut in it so I can knock them out now i don't know if they're going to come out as rewarding as i've seen other people's come out but we're going to give them a little love tap here and see what happens oh so beautiful all right so i'm going to finish knocking all these out and then i'll show you what it looks like when i get done because i'm down to one camera now all right so i've got these knocked out with the hammer and you can kind of see what I've got going on here that two by four is gonna lay down inside there it's gonna go a little deeper than that but you can see I've got this notched out I am going to get the router from the shop tomorrow if we have one I think we do and I'm gonna route those things out because the hammer and the chisel is going to be <laughs> way too much work for that big of an area. But that's the idea to make it sit flat on the floor. So when I get these notched out real nicely, I'll get some fresh boards and they will go in there. And I can mount these to it as I go, except for the last few. And then I'll have to figure out how to drill me like a pilot hole down into the 2x4. So this is going to be my stopping point for tonight. Um, this is my whole Sunday basically is doing projects around the house and I'll keep y'all updated on what I'm doing um, keep doing projects because I got plenty here at home that are waiting on me to do them so if you enjoy this please click that like button subscribe button do what makes you happy uh, and we'll see y'all next time so y'all have a good time